Pikta has always been in the business of the long term, and this is key to sustainability because, in fact, that's what sustainability is about. It's about looking beyond the next quarter, beyond even the next years, and thinking about the well being of the next generation. And Pikta is uniquely tooled to do this for two reasons. One, we have an extremely focused business model on investment advice and investment leadership. And also, we have a unique governance. This governance means that we are partner owned, independent, and these partners have an average tenure of 21 years. And when your average tenure is 21 years, it means a decision you take today will have an impact in 20 years. And so you're anchored in future oriented thinking all the time. Your pressure to deliver is in fact long term, not short term. And so this has, through Pikte, built up a culture of future-oriented thinking, which is inherently linked to sustainability and also to a sense of responsibility towards our clients, our colleagues, and the communities in which we invest and live. So this holistic approach to sustainability means that we look both at what we do on our own assets, but also what we do in terms of managing um, our clients' assets, where we would integrate ESG, for example, provide leading edge products and solutions, and also integrate active ownership, for example. But what we do on our own assets also has impact. So for example, we decided last year to reduce the balance sheet exposure to fossil fuel extractors and producers to zero. And this was a very tangible thing that we could do today because we have full control on our balance sheet to deal with the climate question. Second thing that we've done is we've allocated a pool of capital within our pension fund for employees to impact, which is something that's actually quite cutting edge to do on an institutional portfolio and a multi-asset portfolio. So building up that pool um, that's redirecting capital towards positive impact. And finally, we've reduced since 2007 employee footprint um, in terms of CO2 by about 40%. So this is really something that's been very tangible and done before the Paris Agreement, for example, was even signed in 2015. We were already thinking about this in 2007. So this really demonstrates this long-term view that we have when it comes to sustainability and having an impact in the world. The real challenge for the whole financial industry, in fact, is that over the past decades, we've seen a paradigm shift from a total focus on shareholder value creation, right? The Milton Friedman 1970s view, the business of business is business, that's all we have to do. Planet, society, this will take care of itself if business takes care of itself. Obviously now we know this isn't true. And so over the past decades, we've seen the shift towards what we call systemic value creation. Some people call it also responsible capitalism. But essentially all it is, is trying to understand what the net impact of our investments is on planet and society. But it's also about understanding what the net impact of planet and society and the environmental degradation, for example, or the social instabilities that we would have are on the companies in which we invest. And that's what we call ESG, right? So it's this integration of environmental and social factors into the investment process, but also trying to understand that impact and the net impact that we have as an institution when we're allocating capital. So the real challenge there is data, the availability of data, the measurability of that data, the comparability across industries. That data is now growing, the, the impact data around climate, ESG data around social factors, Regulators are stepping in, like the European Commission with the Sustainable Finance Action Plan to try and ensure that that data becomes increasingly comparable. But that's not enough. Because as good as the data is, and as good as it will get in the future, unless we change the mindset of investment professionals, unless they understand how to use that data within their investment process, within their dialogue with, with their clients, and with the companies in which we invest, then we won't be able to rise to the challenges that we will have in the future and we won't be able to adequately address these important issues within client portfolios. The approach to sustainability will evolve tremendously over the coming years because the truth is we're at the beginning of our journey. What we take for granted today in terms of structured financial data that we can all have a look at on our Bloomberg stations is what we're starting to build now on extra financial data sets. And what's really exciting to see is that right now the focus has been on mainstreaming environmental, social and governance criteria into investment processes. 
And this is happening, right? This is happening very strongly in Europe. We're seeing this happening also in Asia, and we're seeing this happening in the US. Where the next step is, is about understanding the impact of capital flows on environment, on society, and on creating a sustainable financial and a resilient financial system. And I think this is really the next step, the next challenge. It's not just about taking a risk view or a narrow opportunistic view per sector. It's about really understanding holistically what the impact of the financial world is on the rest of, of society and on the planet so that we stay relevant, so that we can keep giving our clients the best type of advice and that we really can build investment leadership, which is built on people, planet, and portfolios.